I want to say a little bit about, in, in an approximated way, uh, the stiffness and rigidity of space-time. And the way to do this would be to come over here, take a look at Einstein's field equation, and this is a tensor equation. Uh, the indices are u and v. u and v each uh, represent the three space coordinates and one time coordinate. So there are actually a total of 16 equations and uh, some of them are the same so there's really 10 in all to uh, work with. But uh, in a very simplified sense this side of the equation represents the curvature of space-time and this side over here especially this quantity here which is a stress energy momentum tensor uh, that represents in a sense energy and momentum so what we want to do is write that in a greatly simplified form and the way we would do that would be we come back over here and we would say the curvature of space-time in some approximate general sense is equal to that constant 8 pi g, 8 pi times the gravitational constant divided by c to the fourth, the speed of light to the fourth power and we could look at, at the remaining part on that side to be representative of a uh, mass energy term. So in order to get an idea of how rigid or stiff space-time is, we want to take a look at this constant here because what it's telling us is this mass energy term times this is what will give uh, curvature to space-time. So 8 pi times the gravitational constant over c to the fourth will be equal to 8 pi times the gravitational constant 6.672 times 10 to the minus 11th and that's in units of uh, Newton meter minus 2 kilogram minus 1 divided by c to the 4 so roughly 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second to the fourth power. And if that if you work that out you can see it's going to be a very small number because of the speed of light in the uh, denominator. And what you get is 2.07 times 10 to the minus 43. And, and the units on that are if you cancel out the units, it would be seconds squared over kilogram meter. So what this tells you is that since this is a very small number, it takes a lot of this multiplied by that very small number to make something big enough to cause a change in the curve of space-time and you can interpret that to mean that space-time is uh, very stiff and rigid. Now that that is just a rough uh, argument and um, when you speak of units everybody knows E equals MC squared and you frequently hear the comment that a tiny bit of mass produces a lot of energy because in this equation it's multiplied by c squared. 
But you could also have a system of units where C is, is 1, and the equation would look like that. So with, with that in mind, we came up with this number. And we have to th think of that uh, rather cautiously because of the way we can change units around. But still, it does give you a pretty good idea that the curvature of space-time needs a lot of something to cause a curvature in that space-time. And that constant 8 pi g over c to the fourth works out to uh, that value. And again, that's an extremely rough approximation to the actual Einstein equation in general relativity. So it, uh, because of this size of this term, it makes it look like space-time is uh, stiffer than any, is rigid and stiffer than any other than any substance that we think of in our, in our regular 3D world. And so that's the story on how to get an approximation for the stiffness and rigidity of space-time.